Hi, this is Tor from ITCOM. In this week's video, we have our interns, Anton and Jonas. They have worked on helping us build our library of standard PM instructions. And in this video, they describe how they've done it. My name is Anton, and I'm a System Science and Engineering major at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Jonas, and I'm a Mechanical Engineering major at North Carolina State University. We are interns at IDCON here to talk about the project we have been working on. Our project was to develop condition monitoring standards for common industry components and equipment. Our research focused on finding relevant symptom modes, as well as the inspection methods used to detect them, and the preventive maintenance that reduces their occurrences. These condition monitoring standards are prints that allow inspectors and management alike to easily understand, diagnose, and properly maintain equipment. We first developed the principles of operation for each piece of equipment to ensure an understanding of how the machinery functions. Our research then focuses on the symptom modes that the machinery may experience. Our definition of a symptom mode is a reasonably observable or measurable indicator of a fault that the equipment is experiencing. We decided to normalize our condition monitoring standards based on symptom modes rather than failure modes to aid in a more pragmatic inspection and prevention of equipment failure because all failure modes are not reasonably detectable and therefore have no practical application in extending the life of your machinery. For example, corrosion in a bearing can be a failure mode, but we can't detect it directly. We can detect the symptom mode of high vibration that is caused by the corrosion, but not the actual corrosion. Therefore, we decided to focus on the detectable symptom modes. In our research, we explored all possible root failure modes and categorized them by how they would materialize in possible symptom modes. We then introduced the possible methods for detecting these symptoms, including inspection tools and other techniques. For each symptom mode, we provide preventative maintenance practices to counteract the root failure modes and extend the life of the equipment. We've also created a database that the prints are based off of, containing more in-depth information. This includes things like inspection intervals and failure development periods. Here we have an example of our condition monitoring standard for a plate heat exchanger. As you can see, we introduced the equipment with our principles of operation, as well as a picture to help the reader understand the function and basic mechanics of the equipment if they are not familiar. We go on to see our first symptom mode for this component, internal leakage. In the what column, we describe the inspection methods that should be used to check for irregularities in the symptom mode. We also explain the preventive maintenance that should be done to prevent the failure modes which cause the symptom to develop. In the Y column, we emphasize the importance of checking for this symptom and the reasons why this symptom may develop. It is a core belief of IDCON that no inspection should be done without knowing why. Our research emphasizes the practical side of inspection and maintenance with a focus on the understanding of how, but perhaps more importantly, why inspections are done. This increases the effectiveness of the maintenance management process by providing a more logical, comprehensive standard. If you have any questions or further interest, please don't hesitate to contact IDCON. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your time. So we asked Anton and Jonas to come up with 25 new condition monitoring standards, and they, they really did a good job with that. They really did. I just want to show you how we use these typically in projects and practically. So let's take a look at just an example of condition monitoring standards. As you see, there are three columns. It's the key, the what, and the why. So these becomes training documents for people. How do you inspect a piece of equipment or it's actually components that we're focusing on, right? Now take a look at that left column keyword. It's not really practical for somebody to carry around these condition monitoring standards because we had 100 before and they added 25 more for standard components, right? So you can't just carry a book with you know, all these standards when you do inspections. So what we did, we took those keywords, as you see in the left column, and we put them in a database. Let's take a look at that database. So here's a screenshot of the database. And what you'll see is we have the component here in the column B. And those keywords, we have a line. There are nine keywords for a motor AC, for example. And for each one of these, we have said, uh, you see the keywords as in column D, right? And then we'll say, on, in column C, we say, can you do this inspection or PM when it's running or when it's stopped, operational or stopped? Also, if there's some tools that we need to actually do that inspection. The frequency is going to change a bit depending on the uh, condition or where the equipment is. But this is just a generic 
four week is what we say for, for, for uh, as a starting point. And then of course, if you have a really high speed motor or high load, maybe we, that we change it to two weeks. And then the trade, who's going to do that inspection? So we basically build a standard for a motor AC, what we do on the run and when it's stopped, what to do, which tools we need, how often, and who's going to do it. So when we go into a plant, we'll, we go through this database with, with our clients and we say, okay, what works for you? And who's going to do this? Which tools do we use? And once we've gone through this for the standard equipment, like here you see here, motor, we have some couplings, you know, pumps. Then it's just a matter of going out, connecting a piece of equipment and saying, what components do you have on this piece of equipment? Well, we have a motor, we have a coupling, we have a mechanical seal, we have a pump. And all the data that we need is actually in there already. So we know what to do. And if people don't know how or why they're doing that inspection, we have a reference to that CMS document so they can go back and actually say, oh, this is how I do this inspection. And this is why I'm doing that inspection. So those become training documents in the background that they can go out uh, and use and, and go back to and, and, and get trained. Well, that's how we use them. And we really thank Anton and Jonas. They did a great job. I hope you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to. Thank you.